say it publicly.
Good evening, everyone. We do have a few minutes before we actually get started. If you would, you can go ahead and place your name and your campus in the chat. And I will announce it when we officially start. But if you want to go ahead and just get that out of the way, you can. We will start in about eight minutes.
Good evening, everyone. We have about three minutes and we will get started at seven o'clock. Are you all coming from another class or? Yes, we are. Okay. What were the hours for the class that you're coming from? What was what were the times? Six to eight. Six to eight. Okay. Okay, it is seven o'clock. Good evening to everyone. Good evening and welcome. Welcome to community. How is everybody doing this evening? Good, how are you? Doing well. Good, thank you for asking. So we will give it just a few more minutes, um, maybe one or two more minutes for the other students to come in. So go ahead and place your name and your campus in the chat. Just as a reminder, you need to turn your cameras on. All of the sessions are recorded, including the chats. So make sure you place your name and your campus in the chat, turn your cameras on. And just as a reminder, all Zoom sessions, including the chats are recorded. So give you a few minutes to type your name and your campus in the chat. I am Professor Ford. Is Morton Ford, but Professor Ford will be just fine. Good evening, good evening. Give everybody about two more minutes and we will move on in to week one's material.
Okay, just one more minute. Good evening. Go ahead and place your name in your campus in the chat. Turn your cameras on. And as a reminder, these sessions are recorded, including the chat. Looks like everyone has their name on their um, Zoom. So in the event, sometimes it, you know, is it come you come in named as your phone or you know your name is not listed. So just make sure that you uh, change that. But for the most part, I can see everybody's first and last name. One more minute, and we'll get started. Happy Friday to everyone. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Seven oh three, we will get started. All right, so it's seven oh three. I know some of you all are coming from another course. It's been a long day, a long week, but nevertheless, we have to do what we need to do. So, welcome again to community. I am Professor Morton Ford, but Professor Ford will be fine. Welcome to community. Our times are on Friday nights from eight to 10. This is a online class and is expected that you treat it as any other class, as a professional setting, as having your cameras on and being respectful to all of us that are in the session. Make sure that you are in the correct session. I wanna say that there are five different community classes, but for the most part, everyone that's here, I do see you on the roll. Just make sure that you are in the correct courses so that you will receive credit for being there. Role and attendance, there are several things and they just go like hand in hand is not one thing. You have to you know, be in attendance. You have to complete your um, attestation. You have to type your name in your campus in the chat. And then you have to complete your weekly assignments. All of those things equal attendance. So just make sure that you keep that in mind. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now I have a poll and this is something I'm um, trying out here. So let me do this little poll real quick just to see how it actually works. Let's see, I'm gonna launch this. So are you all getting a question? Are you receiving a question? If so, if you would answer it for me. Fall weather, and it's just a little thing just to see if this poll is gonna actually work how we think it should. I am excited about this time of year, yes or no. There's no right or wrong to it. Okay, the poll will end in about 30 seconds. <clears throat> And we're gonna end the poll now. All right, for the most part, everyone loves this time of year. Great. So just a little a bit about myself. Um, I have been a nurse for um, over 20 years. I wanna say last time I counted was 26 years. Have worked in um, a variety of settings, long-term care, civilian, uh, military, school nursing, secondary education, um, post-secondary education, intensive care, emergency nursing, just a variety of settings. <clears throat> and it just was like, why does she have all those different places that she's worked in? I don't know. I still haven't found my niche is what I tell everybody. I just want to know everything about everything, mm -hmm. no matter which setting or, or how my journey leads me. I'll be, I have some kind of foundation to be able to help myself or help someone else. So, but anywho, that's just a little bit about me. This is my second term with um, Fortis. I taught in the RN program. This is my first time in the PEN program. All right, let me go ahead and share my PowerPoint and we're just gonna go accordingly. And then I'll share my screen here. So excited to see new faces. 
We're excited to be here. <laughs> this, this shows that we're almost done. Exactly, because this is what, the fourth quarter, fourth semester for you all? Fourth quarter. Yes. And so with that being said, community, and I'm kind of getting ahead, once you make it to community, you're taking all the things that you have learned in mid-surge and P's and your um, fundamentals, and you're putting it all together in a different setting, in the community setting. Because if you think about it, you know, people don't, they can't stay in the hospital, you know, forever. You know, they can't, you know, stay in the doctor's office forever. So where do those people go? They go back to their communities, you know, and so here we are, we are in community and we provide those services. We have to coordinate the resources and those um, our community members, they're of all ages. They have all different disease processes going on. They might be pregnant. So we're putting it all together. So yes, you are near the end. So don't think that you're, you're, you're gonna add to what you know, but it's, it's really not new information per se. So don't is, think it, is it pretty hard, would you say? No, I wouldn't say it's hard. It, it's being able to make the connections with the information that you have. Okay. For the most part, you all are just overflowing with information. But for community, you need to put all, make the connections with the information that you already have in order okay. to be able to take care of your person in that city. So if your community, um, for example, they're having a health fair at the they have an event at the community center. And so you are setting up a booth there providing education about whatever you're providing education about, who's gonna stop by your booth? It could be the pregnant mom, it could be the teenager, it could be the elderly person. And so you just have to swap hats, but you have the information there, but you just have to swap hats depending on who you're in front of at that moment in time. Okay, nice. Yes. So it is an online um, learning experience. We do need a good internet connection. We can't do anything about the weather. Um, we do know that sometimes that happens in our areas, but for the most part, if you're having problems with the internet, um, a strong, having that strong connectivity, you know, we do have, have had students in the past, they will, you know, I'm not sure who they coordinated it with this time of night, but they were able to go to their campus and you know, attend class there. They were able to even take their exams you know, there because of the internet connection was stronger or better per se. But you do have to coordinate that from my understanding. So make sure that you have a secure internet, uh, you know, enough connectivity so that you are able to be on and to be able to receive you know, the, the content that's being delivered during these two hours. Again, we know weather happens. We can't do anything about that. So if that happens, you know, just communicate, hey, bad weather in this area, you know, and we'll just go from there, you know, because that can, that can be on me as well. And I'll communicate that with you. We do ask that your cameras be on. We do ask that you place your name in the chats and your, um, in your campus there also. That's just a routine thing. So when you come in, just go ahead and type your name and um, your campus in the chat. I will announce it. And I do provide reminders that, hey, you are being recorded. And these recordings are kept, you know, they're stored away. So just to let you know, so you can make an informed decision and just let you know that you're being recorded. So um, who should you contact? I am your primary contact. You can contact me through email. Um, going forward, you know, I will share my phone number. You can send a, a quick text message. We have this Zoom set up for the most part. Zoom is going to be our contact, our, our space that we meet for class, for tutoring sessions, for review sessions. It's the same Zoom setting. But going forward, once we start, if you decide you need tutoring and or just a you know, quick session about need to talk about something, we can do that over the phone um, or we can do, you know, Zoom in real quick. I do have office hours. They are on Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m., if there's no mistake. But we'll look at that once we actually get inside the course. So, but I am the first contact. In the event that we can't resolve whatever the issue is or the concern or the question, I move on to the course lead, which is Professor Marvel. If 
we cannot resolve the issue, we move on to Dean Brown. But nevertheless, no fear, we will get whatever the issue or the concern or the question um, resolved. We have, that's, that's our chain of command. So feel free to contact me with good, bad, or ugly. Doesn't matter, that's why I'm here. Um, let's talk it through, figure out what it is that we need to find out. If I don't know, I'll ask and go beyond. So the names, well, Dr. Brown has already posted inside of our announcement and her contact information is there. And so we'll actually post Professor Marvel's contact information as well in the um, announcements. So we just talked about that. So online course schedule and attendance. That attendance is, is one thing, but several things equal that attendance. So classes, they um, start on Mondays and they end on Sundays. So in order for attendance, in order for, your, for you to be marked present for that week, you should, of course, attend a live session, then um, post a, your initial discussion to the board on that, by that, win, on that Wednesday and then respond to two of your classmates and also complete the um, attestation at the end of class. What we have done is we've added that to be completed at the end of class because we've had students that were in class, they were interactive, they participated, but then they forgot to complete that. And we know if it wasn't documented, it didn't happen. And so there's someone else that actually looks at the attendance and what they look at is your post. They look and say, hey, this student has not done an initial post. They have not responded to two of their classmates. They have not completed the attestation. So they're absent. And you know, even though we have these sessions recorded, we say, hey, they were there, but still, if it wasn't documented, it wasn't done. So they are, so you are marked as being absent. So we will give time to at the end of each class so that we can at least get that part done. Okay, late work policy. We are not going to even need to know about this late work policy, but it's here and we have to go over it. So first and foremost, submit work on time. Submit work on time. As you can see here, late work is only accepted with prior approval from the instructor. You have to contact the instructor if you're going to be late and get approval. Now the late policy is, if it's one to seven days late will result in a 10% deduction. Eight or more days late will result in a zero for the assignment. So communicate, if you're, thinking that you know something happens you know life happens to all of us and you say hey i have this going on you know i'm not going to be able to turn that assignment in on time put it in an email so we can have our paper trail submit it and just let me know hey this is what's going on of course i'll add um dean brown in and then professor marvel in with it also but then you will have, you still have to turn that in and complete the assignment within that one to seven days in order to get any credit for it. Beyond the eight days is an automatic zero. So, but we're starting off um, on the good foot, as they say, and we're gonna look at things and, and plan. And so that hope, we're hoping that we don't have to um, seek approval to turn in work, work late, but we know things happen, so we might. So this is here so that you, to understand how that will work. So you have to get prior approval, notification, please put it in an email, you know, saying what's going on and we will go from there. Attendance is taken with student submission. We, we just talked about that. You must have two submissions each week in order for the attendance to actually count. So submissions that count as attendance, of course, the different assignments, it's all this part right here is saying um, within 24 hours, do within, oh, well, no, just the, like tonight, you have 24 hours to respond to the um, attestation to say that you were here and in order for that to count. But the rest of them during that week. Anyone without a posting of attendance for 14 days in a row will be dropped without notification so but we're not going to have that to worry about because we're going to you know we're starting strong we're going to end strong but just so that you know 
you know, 14 days. And how do they calculate that? They look to see what you have submitted. If it's not there, it doesn't, it doesn't count as your attendance. You're marked um, as absent. Okay. Keep in mind, not documented, not done. And we talked about that. Cameras must be on at all times when in class. In the event that you have to like step away, you know, when it's not on break time, just put in the chat to me, hey, you know, need to walk away for whatever. And then, um, but still just leave your camera on. You are not allowed to be in class if you are driving, no driving and being in class. You are not allowed to log in while at work during your scheduled class times. This is for all classes. If I want to say this is the last week, if you need to rearrange, and Dean Brown did post an announcement if you needed to change classes, you know, mix some things up, switch a day or something. I think this is the last week that you have um, time to do that. And we'll look at her announcement too, just to be sure of the date and everything. Because sometimes, you know, you think your schedule is going to allow, but then it doesn't allow. So keys for, um, for success, review work that is due each week. So usually on, at least by Sunday, we post, hey, this is what's due this week. Just kind of give you an overview of what's upcoming, what to expect, the reading assignments, the things that are um, interactive, the, you know, what to expect for the week ahead. Now, we do talk about some assignments that are due beyond like that week. And the reason we, we talk about those, those um, different assignments, there are about three or four is because it, it's gonna take more than just a week or a couple of days to complete those assignments. So even though when you look and say, well, this time is not due until week eight. Well, it's gonna take you pro probably a good seven weeks to get it all up and going. So don't um, just look at that, those dates and say, well, I, got, I have time for that. No, go ahead and, and just be doing a little bit at a time. Just chip away at those big assignments. Attend live sessions weekly. Even, and this is for emergency purposes. For example, you say, hey, you know, um, can't attend the class on Friday during your class time. Is there another class that I might could possibly attend? Now, mind you, it is Friday, so this week's information would have been covered prior to Friday. So if you know before Friday that you're gonna have an issue with coming to this class on Friday, please communicate that in an email and then I'll forward it to Professor Marvel and we'll see if you can attend another live session with one of the other professors during that week. Or if you know something is coming up the next week, um, let's try to you know be proactive with that. But attend live sessions weekly, that is mandatory. You want to read your rubrics. For the most part, you can grade your own assignments. You, you look at the assignment. There's a rubric with each assignment. Click on the rubric and look. Just check off. I've completed that. No, that's not there. I need to go back and, and do that. Tweak that a little bit. But look at the rubrics. That's your roadmap. That's your guide to completing the assignments. For the most part, look at the rules before you actually sit down to start the assignment just to get your mind you know, wrapped around what it is that, that you're supposed to be doing. And then therefore too, you will also you know, start to formulate questions that you need to ask about. So look, check those rubrics out, is your roadmap. Complete all assignments, all complete all assignments. There, um, I haven't had any students to fail because of homework, but that, that is such a thing where they say, well, hey, I'm doing well on those exams you know, the quizzes, so they didn't worry about completing the homework and all the other things. And, you know, at the end, they were not, um, not successful in completing the course. So everything does, it does matter. So just complete all assignments, all assignments. And there are like the NCLEX questions. You can complete those as many times as you need to get as high a score, highest score as you possibly can. We need all the points for all the assignments. Study and complete exams. We have added, they're actually working on um, a study guide for the exams. So you will have that. We will have review sessions. 
I think we finalized the, the review session schedule. So we'll post that also. So what am I talking about? So besides class, we have sessions, and I don't know if you all have done this in your other classes, where they had review sessions that you could attend your, you know, your class during your class time or any of the other class times to review for exams. And they pushed out study guides. So that is something that we're doing too to um, help you know, assist in your success in the course. Stay in contact, you know, stay in contact with me, shoot me a text message, you know, call, send an email. Um, and, and as you see going, you'll see going forward, hey, I just have this, have this question, you know, just send a quick text message. You know, if I can talk or step away, I will. And if not, I'll say, hey, just give me a few minutes. You know, we'll go back and forth and see what, um, how we can actually, if we need to talk or if I can resolve the issue and just respond to the email or the text, we can. We already talked about the internet connection. Maintain a schedule for completing your schoolwork. Identify that quiet place, um, free from distractions, especially during exam time, especially during exam time. You know, you want to log into your classes four to five times per week, just to log in, just to make sure you haven't missed an announcement and just to check on yourself, just to look at the overview of the to-do list for that week, just to make sure that you're staying on top of things. So submit all assignments when they're due and don't forget, you have to get permission to turn in a late assignment. And this right here, procrastination, it's, it's not our friend. It tried to be my friend. I was like, I had to get rid of that friend. But procrastination, it will get you every time. So let me be your um, business or your, to say, hey, lose procrastination. Put them away. Tell them you can't be friends with them. Preparation and expectations for online lecture time. You know, make sure that you're on mute. I'm not sure what happens sometimes will come off mute. Sometimes my, my uh, microphone will get muted. Not sure what happened, what happens. But anywho, just make sure your cameras are on. Make sure you're on mute and communicate through the chat, especially during exam time, which we'll talk about the exam etiquette too. You know, during exam time, you know, you have to be on mute and you have, you must communicate through the chat. You want to complete your readings prior to lecture time because we will be um, interactive and doing some um, different things where we're interactive and being engaged during our lecture time. And so in order for you, you know, to be, to respond and be your best self during that time, you're gonna have to have some understanding or know about what it is that we're talking about. So do your readings, you know, each in the module, which we'll get to that, it'll, it'll specifically tell you which I think someone sent an email today or yesterday. They were looking for, um, you know, something about one of the assignments it was saying to read something. Several of the modules, they're only like, there's only like one page they want you to, to refer to in a chapter. So don't worry about all the other information in the chapter. If it just say specifically page 123, only worry about that one page, you know, and just, just move on. Move on. Because what they've done, they've streamlined it instead of just assigning the entire chapters when there's only one page out of a 30 page chapter that you really need to know about for this exam. Um, that's what they've done to streamline it. So if it just says page 149, just only worry about that one page in that chapter. Okay, so I think everyone has completed their quiz on the syllabus. I think everyone has, everyone has did that. We talked about our last sessions. And if you're having technical difficulties with logging into the, into the course shell, um, exam soft, you have to contact the technical support for those different um, resources. And they're pretty good um, about responding and getting you in and troubleshooting things. Other learning activities, exam review sessions, they're not mandatory, but they're highly encouraged. You can attend all, there are four of us. 
You can attend all four. You can just attend one. Of course, when you attend, make sure you put your name in the chat and your, in your um, campus in the chat. The exam review sessions. There will be four prior to the week prior to the day that the exam is. And they're just on, they're on different days and different times. So, you know, they're not mandatory, but they're highly encouraged. And also what we're doing, we are um, placing the link in the course room. So even if you went to all four, you, you only attended one, we post a link of all of them in the course room. So you're able to go back and review those. Tutoring, we offer tutoring. You know, you have to ask, you know, ask and we'll coordinate a schedule, you know, for the course, for, for the most part, the course is on Friday. But if we need to talk on, a, I guess, a Sunday morning at 6 a.m. for 30 minutes or five minutes, you know, if it's not too huge of a conflict, we'll make that happen for you. Because at the end of the day, we want you to be successful. And if it takes that five minutes on a Saturday evening to just go over a concept, that is what we will do. So, but, you know, feel free to, you know, coordinate that, send an email so we can work that out, put that on the schedule. So remember, don't forget about your KGAs. You have to have that percentile in order for, there is a, at a point, I want to say is it week six that we turn everything on so that you can see like your average. But keep in mind, your KGA has to be that percentage at the end of the day before the other things, meaning the homework and all the other assignments actually take part. They actually um, are calculated in there. So remember, remember that. And so that's why we're adding the resources with the review sessions, we're offering the tutoring so that you can, uh, and the study guide, we're offering a study guide to prior to the exam. There are only three exams. There are three quizzes and then your HESI. So those are biggies. So yes, right here, week one through five, homework scores are turned off. And then um, on week six, we would turn on homework scores. And week eight, we turn the homework scores back off because we don't want you to get sidetracked with looking at that score. Because remember, your KGA has to be that certain percentage before the um, homework and everything is actually um, calculated in there. So we'll keep, so keep, even though you don't see that score calculated in, still complete all assignments. Because at, at week six, we'll turn it on so you can actually see those scores being calculated in, and then we'll turn it off. So just keep, just keep on trucking with completing the assignments. Your combined score on all unit exams and specialty exams in the course must be 78% um, before any credit for completed homework is given. That's 78%. So it, I'm sure at this point, everyone knows about exam solve. So just make sure that you, if you've, if you've gotten a new computer, if you've added a, a webcam, just you know, we wanna make sure all those things are compatible and that exam soft, their software matches or approves, you know, your new computer or you have the correct settings turned on, you know, exam soft, I don't wanna say it's particular, but if certain things are not, the way that they want it to be, you can't move on and take the exam. So go ahead and, and just make sure that um, you have those settings and everything, you know, completed and turned on prior to the exam. Again, as I mentioned, some students, they say, hey, I wanna go to the school and take my exam, use their computer. That's fine, you have to coordinate that with whoever your um, campus dean is so that they can coordinate that. So be just, so just to, as a reminder. Okay, exams, accommodations. You need to notify uh, me per email if you have accommodations and submit the, the paperwork or documentation that supports it. Whatever those accommodations are, because we do want to provide what is supposed to be provided. Exams are Zoom proctored, you log in. Usually I'm on, you know, at least 30 minutes prior to exam time just so that students can get in and just get set up 
Of course, you will start the exam. You know, once everyone gets in, enroll is calm. But you, your cameras must be on the entire time. You have to show your photo ID that that's either a um, your school ID or passport or some type of government ID. And we must be able to see your workspace. Must show your ears. You all know the exam. And then the boards, they added in boards this last time. You could have a dry erase board rather mm. than a um, sheet of paper. Again, what would you, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. What would you do with the dry erase board? Sometimes students just need to write things while they're taking an exam. And, you know, so it's up to you. If, you, if you're not that person needs to write down, you know, not prior to coming to the exam, but just doing the right. exam, you need to, yeah. And they just use it for that. Of course, once you come in, if you're going to have that board, you have to show it back in front that nothing, you know, is completely empty. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, some students just want that. Okay. If you first see that there is going to be an issue where you cannot take the exam, please contact me before. You know, even if like, say for example, our class is on Friday, you already know on Sunday prior, you're not gonna be able to take the exam on Friday. Keep in mind, there are other classes um, that are being offered during the week. And so we may can, you know, have you to take that exam during another class time. So please communicate, communicate any issues, big or small, because you just never know. You know, you're moving, you know, the move, the uh, moving people, they're supposed to be there on Tuesday, something happens with their truck. So now, you know, they're telling you, hey, it's going to be Friday before they can move you. You have to move, you got to move. So communicate that. That's just an example I was giving, but just communicate it. And so that we can be proactive and kind of work something out to keep you within that week because if we move it on to the next week, I mean, we have a certain time frame to get it done anyways. But if we if we push it back too far, then that's going to be extra, extra stress on you. Because then, you know, by then we're we're learning different material and we having more assignments to complete. So if you can, you know, you have some issues coming up where you cannot take the exam as scheduled, please communicate that so we can see what we can do to troubleshoot or to ensure your success. Contact your, contact your instructor if you have any problems or if you would just like some additional help. Tutoring, we can um, make that happen. We've added in the review sessions, homework assignments, all assignments, you know, just complete all of them. Even though you don't see that they're on when you look in the grade book, your grade looks like it doesn't change still complete all assignments plan your time plan your time the syllabi it is there it specifically it says everything week by week what you need to be working on what is due and we'll look at that in just a few minutes we talked about the late work policy inclex that the, the resource section um they are there, the resources are there. You have to complete those in-class questions. I wanna say it's three different submissions of that. You can repeat the questions as many times, as many times as you like, submit the highest score, submit, get all your points if you can, get all of your points. You know, if you're having 26 out of 50, do not submit that. You know, just, just take that extra time, just go back through, just, re, just retake it. Submit your highest score. At the end of the day, every point counts. Every point counts. Um, HESI, RN, not RN case study, but LP and case studies practice exams, they have all of those in the resources. We, we will even have a HESI review. Um, we will have review sessions and it'll just, it'll be like the exam review sessions that we're having. You can attend mine, the others, and we will post the recordings also. Uh, we talked about the, the, the post, your initial one by Wednesday and responding to two others. Now tips for APA, we've listed a resource inside of the announcements and we'll look at that here um, shortly for you to be able to refer to. 
we talked about the exams. Technical issues, we talked about that. You got a new computer, a new webcam. You'd be surprised, you know, how, um, I, don't, I don't know what the correct verbiage is, but how exam soft and those devices and things, they don't talk to each other and you can't go past go. You have to call exam soft and work out um, whatever the issue is before you can take that exam. It will not let you go any, any further. We talked about admission to the exam. Hesse, um, we, we will have those review sessions. And then, so along the way, just think about, just keep in mind, there is a, a, a larger picture. I know you're in community. I know you're in PEDS. I know you're in the different courses, but the larger picture is you having enough understanding of the information from all of your courses, being able to make the connections, sitting for boards one time and passing. So just let that be your driving force to just complete every assignment, complete every assignment to communicate as much as possible when you um, are facing issues, let that be your driving force. You wanna sit for boards one time. So you need this information because remember boards, we don't know what's on the exam. Even for HESI, we go over things, we go over topics, but we don't have the exact questions. So you will have to have that strong foundation of that knowledge from all of your courses to be able to be successful with the course. Any comments or questions about the PowerPoint? Yes, ma'am. Um, not about the PowerPoint, um, but I do have a question. I know you said you do exam reviews and that's awesome. Do you do um, um, a review map also, like our concept map on what we should study outside of the reviews? No, I don't. I, um, I'm not sure if the other professors do that during their review, but no, ma'am, I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And so if you, are, if you need something to drink, if you need to stand up, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll give you about three minutes to do that. And then we'll, we'll go back. We'll look, look in a course shell. We'll look at the announcements that are there. We'll look at the syllabus and then the modules. So that's where we're going. So give you three minutes. Um, to move around, stand up, get something to drink. Let me pull up the course and we will move to the announcement. I have one quick question. Mm -hmm. As far as the NCLEX, do you want rationales with that or no? There should be, for sure, not a screenshot. There should be like a down, a PDF or so that you can mm -hmm. download, so that you can upload that. That's so if we get the so if we get the question wrong, do we have to write out the rationale for the question or just upload the score? Upload the score. And the, with okay. that score, it gives you like a, a printout that the score is at the top, but then it shows you like a printout of what, you know, the different thing. Okay. Do not turn in a screenshot. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Sure. So... My, your Zoom link was in my announcement, but on the About My Instructor page, it's a lady named Professor Cable. Ooh, are you in the correct course? I used the Zoom link that was in the announcements, which was your Zoom link. Okay, so in what might have happened, we were moved around into different courses, so that might have been, I'm not sure. So, um, the core shell is, now tell me that again so I can make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. Say that again. My, so in the about my instructor portion of like my modules, it's mm -hmm. not you, it's a lady named Professor Cable, but your Zoom link was in my announcement. Hmm. So about the instructor, do you see my picture on about my instructor? Is my picture there? No, I just seen this lady named Professor Cable. Oh. I had the same thing happen. And so it might be that they moved around because like you all are really in two, you all are two, two different classes right here together. And so you're um, PM1 Friday and PM2 Friday. So you are really two different classes that are sitting right here before, before me now. So I am. Yeah, somebody in the chat said that they have the same thing too. 
Oh, I say Professor Cable too. Mm. And so but tell then, me, what does your, been, tell me what does your course say? Zero PN 208 dot. Tell me what's after the dot. I don't have a dot. I don't think. Oh, uh, no, I don't have a dot. OPNR 208. And then it's just dot. There's nothing afterwards. I don't have a dot either. Hmm. But your Zoom link was in our announcements. And I have been looking this whole time after I saw like the about my instructor. Mm -hmm. And there are no other Zoom links. Okay. Only now, yours. let's see. Let me look at my role here. And... And I was actually looking in the course. Who was that that was talking to me? Who was that? Kara Moody. Kara with a K. Okay. Yes, you're on the roster. You are actually, let me go to the course shell again to see which course you are actually in. Okay, oh, you are on the roster in it is showing you in section two of Friday. Session two. And let's see here. And I'll check that out to just see what might have happened. And so I just it, figured it might have been something random, like they had her like teach another course or something, but I just wanted to check and make sure. Yes, that's probably what that's what probably what happened. Because like I said they moved us around in different um courses um different days. So that that might have been what happened. I yeah. just want to make sure that like I'm not in the wrong class or anything. Exactly. Yes, I do see you on the roster for um, okay. session two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for bringing that to my attention. We'll need to still look into it, though. And what professor did you say the name was there? Uh, professor Cable. I can give you her first name as well. It was on there. Okay, Cable. Okay. I'll look at it and look into it and see. Uh, Kimberly, Kimberly Cable. Okay, thank you. Or Kimberly Cabe. Sorry, not Cable. Cabe. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, so we'll definitely look into that. All right, so I'm going to share my screen here. She, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. She has her Zoom link on here as well. Ooh. Like under her like contact information. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, but I got the time for like your class. Hmm. Yes, I'll Taylor. look into that. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, we'll we'll check that out. Not sure, but your name is on a, in a class. You, your name is on the roll for community. So we'll okay, um, thank you so we'll much. check it out. We'll check it out just to you know so we can we're clear on it. So we'll bring clarity to what's really going on. But I'm sure we just got moved around okay. to different courses. I, I'm almost sure that's what happened. And some of okay, our thank you. Is look some of our um you know how they say you have a footprint you know, your digital footprint and some of our footprint was left so I'm not sure but we'll check it out <laughs> okay thank you all right so for the announcements um let's see here what's the right one so this is the APA resource it's there there are there's a document that shows you um it gives you some other resources at Al Purdue the writing center there um so Keep this in handy. You might want to even print out the, the document that's actually there. 
so that you can have that as a guide. So that's that APA resource and, you know, pull it up and just, you know, map it, ask questions. But there is also a, um, you know, a, an example there. So let's see this cover sheet. Let me make sure. Okay. Um, office hours are on Tuesdays, you know, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Of course, if that time doesn't work for you, you know, we can coordinate something. Just send an email so we can figure out, you know, the time. But we do have Tuesdays set aside to provide that time for you in, uh, you know, in about an hour. So from 8 to 9. And then just let me know if, you know, you're wanting to meet during that time. It could be a phone call, as I mentioned, and or the Zoom. So the course start date was October 3rd. The withdrawal date is November the 25th. The last, the end date is December 25th. Of course, that is not, you know, the course ends prior to that, but that's the last date within that week. And so that's why it looks like class ends on December 25th but it's really December 19th, if no mistake, but the 25th is like a week from that date. So that's why that date is listed like that. So again, tutoring times and location available as needed. So we've posted some classroom etiquette and expectations there. That's our welcome message and some information if you need it. They have some sessions. They were ordered. Um, they had some sessions being offered if you needed some um, assistance with the ebook. And we have two announcements from Dean Brown. This is her welcome letter, and then we'll look at that schedule changes. That announcement that she she um, put out. So that's just a welcome letter. And her contact information is in here, her email and her phone number. In the event that we should need that, that's readily available for us. And let's look and see the schedule changes. I was thinking this was the last week. So if you have any conflicts, look at, go ahead and look at your schedule. You know what you have you know, going on um, and just look at it. And she says, if you wish to make a change or need to make a change due to a conflict with your classes, please let Dean Brown know by October 10th. So that is Monday? Monday. Yes. So, so email her through the Canvas course. And then that way she can keep up with, you know, and you all can correspond back and forth about what, what's available you know, and what might be a better fit for you. So by Monday, start communicating. And because there will be no switching approved after Friday, October 14th. So please put that in writing if that's what you need to do. To so start looking at it, you have to sit down with your family and see, you know, what they have going on, what you have going on with your schedule, with other classes, with your work schedule, and, you know, your other responsibilities. And then so in the announcements, we post every week by that um, Sunday, you know, what's coming, you know, what's due, what to expect for that week, you know, things that you should be working on. And it's pulled from your um, syllabus. So this information is pulled from your syllabus. And so it's just a, a one week at a glance rather than, the, you know, the entire syllabus at a time. For the most part, the Zooms do not change. The links, they don't change. And we're adding notes in um, with the announcement as well. Now, the notes do not take the place of you doing your reading assignments and looking at those different resources that are actually in each module. But it's just another resource, a different way to look at the content. And we've kind of just narrowed it down and placed it all in one place. So make sure you look through the announcements and check out the, the notes. And that'll be done weekly.
with those for all of our announcements at this time. So we're gonna look at our syllabus. So again, if you if you did not place your name and your campus in the chat, be sure to do that. Remember the Zooms are recorded, the chat is recorded as well. So make sure you do that. Let's see. So I have the, the syllabus pulled up another way. Let me stop sharing and just pull that document up. I have it right here. Okay, let me share again. Hmm, my screen share has stopped. Let me share again. I'm not sure what happened. Okay, so the syllabus, you know, it shows what, you know, all the um, student learning outcomes. Um, make sure you look at those and therefore you can, you can kind of test yourself to see, well, hey, you know, am I on target for, you know, with the outcomes? Let me go back and hit to the top. There isn't a simulation or a clinical that goes along with the, this, you know, this course community. There isn't one, so. It is just your, your classwork, you know, our lectures and, um, you know, completing all your, your assignments. But look at the learning outcomes just to ensure that you're able to think through what that outcome is talking about, making sure you have understanding. And you, I mean, it might be that you need to review some, you know, some prior content in addition to what, you know, what we're reviewing. I don't know what this thing is doing. You guys jumping down too um, too far. Oh, my one mouse is down. Let me stop sharing and then we reshare. Hold on. Let me close this. Pull this back up. It's fine. Okay. So I'm from the O's because I printed my little syllabus out so I could see just to make sure but what was there. You know, it's whatever works for you. All right, so here we go. You want to look at the course objectives also. Those help to, help to ensure that, you know, you're thinking what you're thinking, you're making the connections with the content, and you're just identifying all, you know, some things that you might need to go back and review. The course objectives help you do that also. Again, you have to have that 78% on those key graded assignments. Don't forget that, that 78%. The, um, you know, the homework grades will be turned off, will be turned on. We, the instructional methods, we use, you know, a combination. So for sure, you know, your learning style should be addressed in some of some, if not all of the assignments, because they're all the learning styles, the different things that you have to do in order to complete the assignments. They're there to kind of meet all the different learning styles. So your books, you should have all the books that are needed already, because remember, you have already taken um, mid surge. You should have already taken maternity and peds and fundamentals. And these are the same books. And then they do have those packages for you in the resource section for you to have access to. Okay. So remember, we will do what we can within the realms or the guidelines that are allowable, you know, by the college. So just keep that in mind, you know, no matter how, you know, you know, we feel for or understand the situation, we still have to operate within 
the guidelines. So be sure to communicate. Um, keep in mind those key graded assignments. Keep in mind, I mean, even though you don't see those homework scores averaging in, know that the, everything at the end of the day, everything do count. You do have to get permission for late work. And here we go for week one. So in the um, in the module, which we'll, we'll click over there, when it says Canvas reading or course reading, the information is there. So the syllabi shows you week by week the things that you should be doing. So go ahead and like, you know, look for, you know, this week, look at at least two weeks at a time so that you can, you know, be thinking through you know, if you have some questions or you can, you know, be foreseeing what, well, hey, I, you know, I'm going to need some, some tutor room with this or some extra conversations. So just, just go ahead and be looking at that at least two weeks ahead of time. At, at, at this week right here, look at the entire syllabus just to see what's expected and how things fall. For the most part, everything is due on that Sunday um, of that next week. So mark your calendar, mark your calendar. If you want to, you can copy and paste things to a calendar, however it works for you so that you can stay you know, on time and that you're completing things the way that you need to. So um, we start preparing more for um, HISI during week 10, but remember we, we're preparing the, the, whole, the whole while you know, we're preparing the entire time for HESI, but we really just start to focus, you know, we zoom in on it then, but everything does matter. And then an exam is doing that um, week 11. And then you have to do your remediation. Um, that's equivalent to your score. Are you all familiar with that? If you make a certain score, you have to remediate in order to get the, the exam points. I see heads shaking up and down, so yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. How many attempts do we get for the HESI? Is it one or two? It's one from my understanding. Okay, because I had just repeated this class and they gave us two attempts. I think it, it's in a handbook, Okay, but I'm not sure. Okay. Yes, Um, if it's two, whatever's allowable, was ever in their handbook, that's what we will go by. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But let's just focus on that. Is that one time we're sitting for boards one time, we're getting up and walking away. We just wait on them to, to click the button. So we'll go to their website. They, they, it shows your name. Yeah. So yeah, whatever's in the, um, you all don't forget to turn your cameras back on. Whatever's in, you know, the guidelines, you know, we will, we'll abide by that. Yes. Okay. So now okay, let's look at thank the, you. You're welcome. We will look at the modules. Let's go back to our course here because in sometimes you kind of lose your way inside of the modules. But if you just click like next, once you in the module, let me go down, let me share my screen again. Okay, it shows you, you know, your reading for that week. And if you just, if you click some of the um, wording or the, um, the information is listed are live links. So if you click it, it automatically takes you on to that resource. And that's an example right here with saying page, let me go back, click before I should have. Let me go back. And the reason I say click the next, once you actually go in the module, because you don't really see the um, course reading or Canvas reading as they have it worded, if you don't really see it from that module, if you open it up and just go with the next button, 
it'll take you there. So this is an example right here. So it says med surge community care on page 123. That's the only page that you need to look over for that reading. But then right here in your fundamentals is saying chapter one. So that means look at that chapter in its entirety. Okay. So if you go to next. See, this is your, this is how you find your course reading. It is there. But on the, mo on the main module page, it lists like you have three course readings. So if you just keep clicking next, it'll show you each one of those course readings. So they, the course readings or the Canvas readings, they're not in a book. They're actually listed in the module. And then within that, you still have some live links or some resources that it'll take you to. So let me go back out to week one. here and see if it'll actually take it take you there okay so that so those links are working as well okay initially i didn't think they were working but they are so you can do the next or you can you can actually access it straight from the, the module itself so you don't have to do the next and the next but those resources are here they're not in they're not going to be in your your textbook and then you do have the um, assignments and the due dates are listed for each assignment. So we'll just look at a few, the next week two and week three. So again, it gives you the course outcomes and then all the different topics. For quizzes, you know, wait until the closer to the due date um, before you actually complete those, way closer to the due date on those quizzes because, you know, just to make sure that you've covered all of the content prior to taking the quiz because there's only one submission for the quiz. Okay. And again, here, they're giving you specific page numbers. Only look, look at, you know, that the chapter has 100 pages. Only look at those page numbers that it's specifically um, referring to. And let's look at the, the HESI assignment. Let's see which module that is in. So that's one of the um, assignments that you can complete throughout as you go along. So let me make sure we pull that up. Let's see where is it at. I think it's in week eight or nine. So. The assignments, they, they build up on each other. For the most part, they do. They build up on each other. I'm looking, okay. Vulnerable Populations Project, week 10. So <sighs> your week one discussion question kind of gets you to thinking about those vulnerable populations. You can either go with the one you selected there and just continue to add on so that it is complete, you know, by the time week 10 um, actually arrives. So for the most part, your assignments, they're gonna build upon each other. So see which assignments you can, you know, you can just continue to add to, revise it. And so that you're not just starting a brand new coming up to week 10, because it's gonna be kind of hard for you to get the, the huge assignment done, prepare for the exam, and then for HESI. So it's going to be a lot on you and it's just extra and added stress. So if you have identified and you can change, but if you already identified a vulnerable population that you're interested in and would like to, you know, do the larger project on, just continue to work with that and just revise it along the way. Okay, let me look back at my notes and make sure I've touched on everything. Everyone has completed the technology quiz. The, um, those grades automatically populate, some grades automatically populate in the gradebook. 
Let me just make sure referring to my notes. Are there any other questions or concerns? So let me, let's look at week seven. I have a question, Dr. Martin, Morton Ford. Um, for, um, because our class falls on Fridays, do we have class the day after Thanksgiving? Ooh, I don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> we put that on my, uh, <laughs> didn't even think about that. Let me uh, put that on my, to ask this. I'm not sure. Did not think about that one. We need to know, don't we? That's needed to know information. Question about on that Friday after Thanksgiving. Okay, we'll find out. I'm not sure. Oh, and so you have this group project that's due in week seven. So we will um, post the group assignment so that you all can start coordinating your times and working on that, you know, doing your little talk sessions and troubleshooting. So that's another big one, but we'll post the groups um, for sure. For sure by the beginning of third week or the end of third of week three. So don't worry about that. We'll put you in your groups and let you know who you're working with. Any other questions or concerns while I'm referring to my notes just to make sure we um, have covered everything. So you do have the three exams is during week four, seven, and 10. I did mention earlier that we will start reviewing for that exam the week prior. So there will be a posting It'll be a one document that we'll share once they finalize all those dates, letting you know who's going to um, post the review sessions and the dates and times. And it is um, voluntary. You know, it's strongly encouraged to attend those. Making sure. Okay, we talked about that. Okay, looks like we have covered everything. So community nursing, just let me just hear, what are your thoughts about what community nursing is? I kind of touched on when we first um, came in, but what are, what are your thoughts about community nursing? Like what settings, you know, what disease process? Like help the community? like teach the community and help and help with resources? Um, like at clinics and like, like you say, like at fairs, public, like at schools, churches, it, church events. Just not to one population, but to all. Like one set of and um people, but to everyone, the community nurse assists and teaches. All of that is correct, and thank you all for sharing. Yes, the, the community you are in various settings, like a you know, ever since um the pandemic started, the different you know, community, community settings were there, but it, it really became popular. You know, they had clinics, they, they established clinics, you know, in parking lots, you know, at the mall. I mean, it really, really pulled the, the community resources. It pushed people, you know, to think differently and how can we still serve, you know, and provide the resources for our people. And so, um, you know, those clinics, and they're still having vaccination clinics. You know, they're saying that the flu, you know, since COVID has sort of kind of died down, you know, of course it's not at pandemic level. So it has, you know, it's not occurring as much, but it's still occurring. But now the flu has, you know, reared its ugly head and it's, it's you know, it's wreaking havoc, you know, in some communities. 
So they're establishing these flu clinics now. You know, people just drive up and you get your flu shot. And so, yeah, at the church events, you know, where do most people hang out at? You know, they have a big event coming up. So they're collaborating with the um, events that they already have on, you know, on the calendar because people are going to be there. So you're not actually asking people to come to something else. You're going to the people. You're taking the healthcare to the people. So they're going to be at the church event. Okay, let's set our clinic up in the church parking lot. And telehealth had was as on the rise too. You know, it's been a thing, but it for sure is a thing now. Where you can pretty much zoom in and you know have your doctor's appointment right there. You know, they can do, they can assess. You know, they can prescribe after they have done their assessment right there. And so community, it's um, and for the most part, I don't want to say you're by yourself, but you're pretty much, you know, the word is autonomous. You know, you're out there because you're identifying those resources, you're troubleshooting things, you know, you find some, you're running into brick walls, you're the person that has to say, hey, well, I need to go a different route, I need to figure out, you know, I need to collaborate with these, you know, these clinics or these different healthcare professionals. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. It allows you to, you know, really serve the people, you know, beyond, you know, because it, it was a day when you went into the hospital, you stayed there for weeks and weeks at a time. You know, you could need to be in the hospital for at least a day or two now and they'll, you know, they'll discharge you. And so who's there to keep that care, that to provide that continuity of care? You know, we are as a community, um, you know, healthcare workers. Any other questions or concerns? So any other questions or concerns? We look in the chat, make sure I haven't missed anything I need to address in the chat. Did you say that the um, reviews for the exams were recorded? Yes, they are recorded. Okay. <clears throat> I'll try to make them, but I work full-time and go to school full-time. So it's a little, a little difficult. Okay. And that's why we're offering them on different days and times from the class time, because we know, you know, sometimes you, you know, you have a little bit of time on a Monday at, you know, a different time than you would normally during class time. But yes, they're not mandatory. They are recorded and we do share the links. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or concerns? So happy learning, everyone. Let's get started. So go ahead, uh, complete your week one. We're going to stop right now and let you complete your um, assistation so that because you have to complete those within 24 hours you know, of class time. So we go ahead and log into your course. And for the most part, I think you should be able to just put today's date in my name and that should be it. Oh, okay, we put your name in there too? Yes, in today's okay. date. And hit submit. submit. When I went to do it, it asked you like questions like, uh, what does the syllabus say about late stuff? Like there were like five questions. Okay, I think someone did say they saw four questions. I, we thought, I thought they were gonna fix that. So if there are four questions, let's look at them and let's answer them. Let's go ahead and pull up your course, log in so you can get that done. Because remember it has to be completed within 24 hours. So we're gonna give you time now to complete that. And if it does have those questions there, just, you know, just answer them and then submit it. Cause you are, you know, you're being given time now to answer it. But I think going forward, it, it's just that it's going to be just my name and then that date. But until then, we'll, you know, we'll answer those questions. Oh, yeah, I see the questions. <laughs> Is it 10 or four? Because I've heard different, different numbers. Four, okay. It's, it's four. And then I wanted one time it was showing two of the same questions. They were repetitive. So, it, and if it's there, just answer, just copy and paste your, your answer and just hit submit. So you've gotten that out of the way. Again, if you have not typed your name and your campus in the chat, please do so. Okay. And did you did it? Ms. Hill, if you would um, remind me of that. I got your message, but just remind me of that. And um, 
we'll we'll talk about it. Just we'll set up a um, you know, a quick phone so we can talk about that. And thank you for letting me know. Okay. So again, you know, anytime you come into the Zoom, you always put your name in your campus. If you have to step away, put it in the, the message just to me. Don't send it to the entire class, you know, whatever. How do you, how do you just do the message to you? Um, one, when you click on chat, there's a little arrow that's pointed down. So it's like a greater than, greater than or um, less than sign, but it's going this way. You want to help me out? What is that called? <laughs> it's going down. If you okay. click that, our names will pop up and then it'll say everyone in the meeting or it'll have our individual names. And then I don't think I can, I don't think I can share that. And then you just- Oh, I see it. it. Okay. See it. okay, perfect. Yes, you click that and then you're able to, once you click who's, whoever you're sending it to, their name will go in the two and then you just type your message. And it's a okay. direct message to that person. So we do at-risk reports. So in the event that you're not attending class or some other issues are occurring, um, you know, you're not, you know, your scores, you're not turning in homework assignments, not completing assignments. We do turn in at-risk reports to your deans. So, you know, we just, you know, just to make sure that, you know, we're covering all bases to ensure your success. So just to make sure that that's, just to let you know, that's that's a thing, a resource that we use too. And, you know, go ahead and look at your schedule for those exam dates. And if you know that you're having issues with your internet, you know, go ahead and, and schedule that, you know, the exam date for you to take that exam on campus. And if you're, um, I think, now I'm not sure about this, if you can check out a computer and a camera, I'm not sure, but that might be a, uh, you know, a resource that's available for you. Okay. So for, I think I have one or two of you, I was just step back in. We are completing the, um, your assistation for this week. And we're asking questions if you have questions or concerns about anything. Once you have completed that, we will say good night to you and happy learning. Let's complete it and be successful. Once you um, complete that, just go ahead and log off. If you have questions or concerns, if we need to go to a chat room to talk, we can do that too while we're here. I forgot to say that. Thank you, Dr. Ford. You're welcome. Hi, thank, thank you. you. See you next week. All right. Thank you. you. Week. You're thank welcome. You.